I just installed this off-grid solar powered gate opener that uses a 24 volt battery. So that way we have all of the opportunity we need to open this gate with ease without having to get out of our truck, unlock this chain and then get back in. So this means when the weather is gross and raining like this, we can stay in our vehicle and not have to deal with the chain anymore. The solar powered gate opener is by T Opens and this is a 40 watt solar panel. I actually have five 10 watt solar panels to put together, but instead I did a 40 watt configuration and I'm gonna show you in this video why I decided to do that instead. This is all that is needed in order to power the gate for years on end. The 40 watt solar panel feeds power down into this 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. I got this from EcoWorthy, partly because there are not a lot of 24 volt batteries on the market, but also because this has cold temperature protection, it's lithium iron phosphate. It's gonna last for 10 years very easily. This is not its finished setup here. I'm going to be burying this inside of a cooler so that way it has some insulation and is gonna be under the ground after today. There's also a special secret wand that's underneath the gravel here. This will reach out to up to 12 feet away and it uses a magnet. So as it senses some type of iron coming by or gets kicked or has enough vibration on it, then this will open up the gate so that way vehicles can come out without having to use a key fob or the keypad. There's even this wireless keypad here to make life easier. So if we have guests coming that don't have a key fob, they can punch in the code here by hitting PID and then the code and then OK, and that will open the gate for them. The installation is easier said than done. It took my friend and I about six hours to do this completely by ourselves. We did watch some other videos and followed the instructions but they just weren't very clear. So in this video, I'm gonna take you the exact step-by-step -step process to do exactly what I did with adding the controller, the solar panels, the battery, and having a dual gate opening. This is probably one of the hardest setups you can do. So if you're only gonna be opening one gate, then it's gonna be even easier than what we did here today. So let's go ahead and get straight into those steps. I was surprised to see how few boxes this whole system fits in. This big box here holds both of the actuating arms. Because I have a dual gate setup, I need two arms for opening everything up. They come plastic wrapped, very well packaged, no damage at all. And then there was another package that had some solar panels, extra wiring, and the exit wand. We did watch another video that I found on YouTube. It was pretty helpful, but didn't go through all of the details that I wanted to, which is why I'm partly making this video, so that way you can see how to do it. There are two different arms that you need to use for either push to open or pull to close. I'm doing a push to open setup. It's okay to mix and match these for pushing and pulling. Just make sure you have them in the right spot for the gates you want to push or pull. What's really cool is these only use 50 watts each, which is not a lot of power at all. So by connecting them to my EcoWorthy 24 volt battery, this will literally give me 24 hours of nonstop runtime if I wanted to, which I'm obviously not going to do. There are two L brackets to be used with either the push open or pull open setups, and it has a set bolt as well in order to get it to the right configuration that you need. This takes a little bit of finagling and you're just gonna use this shorter big bolt in the middle for the pivot and then the smaller bolt to keep that arm fixed. Then this angle bracket goes on the other end of the arm and this is what's going to attach to the gate. This hurt a little bit. These cotter pins are quite strong. So make sure you pay attention to that. It might be easier just to tap it in. There's a short one and a long one. Make sure you're using the long one for this triangle shaped L bracket and then the short one for this larger L bracket that has the push or pull arm on it. There's truly not a lot to put together. There is a good amount of hardware that's included in the box, so it can be a little daunting at first wondering where everything goes, but once you give it enough time, you'll see everything has its place. This heart-shaped key is really important that we're gonna be using to release the tension on this arm, so that way we can test how far this arm needs to stretch out. You just do a 90 degree turn and then leave it that way until you're ready to set it. This allows this inner rod to come in and out easily. Now this is where it's really helpful to have two people because you wanna keep the black bulky part of the gate arm at least an inch away from the gate itself so that doesn't damage itself or the gate. So by having two people, we're able to figure out whereabouts we want this to be in the closed position. You'll see that that silver piston is all the way in and then we're adjusting it for how far it's gonna be open. 
One thing that T-Opens does not include are any lag screws to anchor this to whatever post you're using. I luckily had some quarter inch lag screws on hand, but I am gonna come back later and upgrade these to at least 3 8 inch because that's gonna be a lot heavier duty. But the gate is really light, so I'm not worried about it breaking anytime soon. This is for the gate itself. So we use a 3 8 inch bit to drill the holes. And to get it started, it's really helpful to use a metal punch. So that way you can have a little set hole to get your drill bit going and get this drilled out. There is other hardware that they did include. I believe it's zinc plated or stainless steel. So it is outdoor rated to where this is not going to corrode over time. And then I use a 17 millimeter deep socket in order to get this tightened up. Don't over tighten it if you're using a metal gate like I am, because it is pretty thin metal. You will squish it down. We're gonna repeat the exact same process on the other gate. It's just a matter of finding out where the L brackets on the wooden post are gonna go and where the arm is going to be in the closed position. See how we're pulling it in and that silver arm is starting to disappear. We wanna get this set for the closed position and then we'll adjust it for the long position later. And now we're checking it to see how close that black arm is going to be to hitting the gate in the open position. And then we want it to close where these gates are just barely overlapping. This is the PWM charge controller from T Opens, and there's not a lot of information here other than where to put the solar, the battery, and the load. And so this was a little confusing because we didn't want to burn this out. They include these 10 watt solar panels that are high voltage and very low amperage, and this charge controller can go up to 50 volts. This part's a little tricky, and I, I really don't like how T Opens does the solar panels, but I get why they're doing it because they need the higher voltage. We need to do parallel connections. I have five solar panels, but I don't have a five to one combiner cable. I have a three to one and a two to one. They sent two charge controllers so that we could have a group of three and a group of two. We have enough hardware to do all of that. I would really like to simplify all of this. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm gonna be combining some of the hardware and not using the fifth solar panel. These straight pieces here are gonna go between the panels and then I'm gonna use the two post brackets here along the bottom and then we have these slight angle brackets. I honestly think these should be steeper, more like a 45, it's like a 22. So I'm gonna use some treated lumber or whatever lumber I can find and screw in like a two by four. I'm gonna put these on here like so and then this will sit on top of the post with the two by four going right here, making one 40 watt panel and uh, that's more square-like rather than a rectangular long and skinny 50 watt panel. In my opinion, it would just make a lot of sense to get like two 50 watt panels and put them together in series to get the higher voltage. You'd have pretty much the exact same voltage as this. So if you don't get their solar panel set up here, then I would probably just get two 50 watt panels, bracket those together to make it a high voltage 100 watt panel and then make your own bracket to put it all together. Using the hardware that was included with the solar panels, I'm gonna put all of these together in a top to bottom setup, and then I'm gonna use one last bracket across the top to hold it together left and right. This was pretty tricky because there's not a lot of room to work behind the frame of the panel, but I was able to get it with my pair of channel locks and a Phillips bit on my drill. Unfortunately for Kyle, he was stuck doing all of the trenching because we do have to get a wire that goes from the right post to reach the control box that's gonna be mounted on the left post. While he keeps digging that, I bent these brackets just a little bit more and then got them fastened together. Using this treated lumber and outdoor rated construction screws, I put this all together so that it gets ready to mount right next to the gate. It's always very nice to have friends help you out with this. You could also rent a trencher and we're only going about six to eight inches deep. Ideally, it needs to be 18 inches deep. One of the tricky parts about this configuration is that we need everything to be in a parallel connection. So I'm stripping off all of these blade connectors off of the wires from each solar panel. I'm going to wire all of the positives together and all of the negatives together. I should have left the connectors on the yellow wires, that way there's no chance of shorting this out. But because it's a cloudy day and the panels are flat on a solar panel, I'm sure they're not making enough power to short each other out but I recommend you don't have all of the wires stripped at the same time. Now that I've got all the reds together, I'm gonna to put it in this outdoor rated butt splice connector to join all of them in parallel. That just means all of the positives together and then all of the negatives together, just like this. 
I bought these outdoor rated butt splice connectors online on Amazon. That's definitely the cheapest place to get them. You can probably find them at any hardware store, but I only found indoor rated ones at my local hardware store. So that's why I ordered these online. Now, I love my Milwaukee tools, and this is probably one of the lowest rated Milwaukee tools out there is their portable battery powered heat gun. I convinced myself that I absolutely had to have this in my arsenal. And holy cow, is this thing slower than molasses in January. It takes absolutely forever to heat shrink these connectors. I would highly recommend just getting some propane and using a little torch to melt this all together. Now we're starting to see the finish line. I'm gonna get this solar panel mounted to this fence part of the post just because this was easier than putting it up on the very top of the post because the post is round where this fence is rectangular and flat. Just made a lot more sense to do it this way. It seemed like it was gonna be a lot more sturdy. And I'm gonna be cutting back a few of these branches from this choke cherry tree. And if you've never had choke cherries, they can be really good, but also very dry. I'm using six construction screws to hold it onto this wood here. T-Opens usually suggest that you take two very small 12 volt batteries and you wire them in series, but I wanted a reliable, powerful battery, which is why I went with the Eco-Worthy 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Cause it's gonna last me for 10 years. It has flame retardant protection, Bluetooth connection, and has low temperature protection. I wanted all of that for my battery for the gate because I plan to use this for a long, long time. 2.56 kilowatt hours literally means this could run nonstop for 24 hours straight before the battery dies. I'm not concerned about this battery running out of power anytime soon. Another thing that was not included by T-Opens or Eco-Worthy was this 3 8 ring terminal. So I bought this on my own, again online, and I'm just going to connect this to the battery cable that I again had to strip from T-Opens so that it works with these bolts that are on the battery. All of this is outdoor rated so that way if it rains or gets any moisture or anything like that on it, it's going to be safe and not have any type of corrosion. The next step is getting the right gate arm connected to the control box. In order to do this, I have to strip off the ends of these five wires and this whole wire set is gonna go in the trench over to the left gate because that's where we're mounting the control box. As usual, using my outdoor butt splice connectors, just need to crimp it all together. This is for the 14 to 16 gauge wire and it seemed to work just right. And here I sit again, just trying to get all of these melted together so that way they're watertight. Seriously, just get a torch. Now the wiring diagram is very helpful. It shows you where to put actuator or gate opener one and two and how it wires up into the control board. But the main problem with this control board is you can't tighten the wires in without pulling the whole thing out and flipping it upside down. This was the easiest way to access the flathead screws for putting these wires in. It's very simple to follow the diagram and get these into each position, but you will have to remove the six screws that hold this entire chipboard in the box. We're doing style three, which is using batteries as the power source and only using the solar panel to charge the batteries. So that means we're gonna take our 24 volt battery and go to the battery port of the charge controller. And then for the load, that's gonna to go to the control board. For the solar panels, we'll go into the solar input port of the charge controller. And to show you that I did that here exactly, here, this is going to the 40 watt solar. This for the battery is going down to the battery on the ground. And then here for the load is going over to the control board inside the box. Now that this is mostly wired up, I'm connecting power to the control board so we can start testing this. And then we'll get the wand installed. To get the key fobs to work, there's a small black button that you click here, double click, and then a hold on each key fob. You're seeing three lights blink here. That's because I already programmed the key fob but I do have my wireless keypad here that I need to enter. So I'm gonna push the button and then click OK, and you'll see the flashing red light. That means that it has now learned that keypad or key fob. Now it's a matter of adjusting the gate so that they don't open too far and don't put too much strain on the arms. We open and close these over and over to get it just right. You want at least an inch of clearance between the black arm and the gate, so that way it's not binding and hurting itself. These will push really hard, so be careful of that. In order to adjust how far they will open, there is a set screw on the bottom side of this black arm. There's one that's under a piece of red tape. Don't touch that one. The other one that's close to the bolts that go on the gate is the one you wanna adjust. And it's just a matter of trial and error, sliding it back and forth and tightening it so that it opens and closes how you'd like. The exit wand has a ton of cable on it. So you can really put this wherever you want. It actually works off of magnetism, not necessarily off of vibration or being driven over. 
It will reach up to 12 feet, so you don't have to have this go underneath a vehicle, but it is sensitive to vibration. In order to wire that, follow the wiring diagram, but the black and blue go into ports five, then six, and then you have the red and green going into, I believe it's 11 and 12. But there is a little piece that we have to add, which confused me for a second. But by using this Wago coupling connector, I just added the yellow to this little device that comes with the wand. I went yellow to yellow, and then it converts to a black, which is then going to land into the 12 port, if I remember correctly. There are technically three different ways to pull out from my property. So I wanted to test where this would work best. So at first we started with further back, and then got it slowly closer. I actually kicked this railroad tie next to it, and that was enough vibration to get it to turn on. But again, it works off of magnetism. You don't have to have vibration, but to give it a quick trial run, we pull my truck up and it's working just fine. So we decided to move it a little bit closer to the gate. And once again, Kyle is doing all of the trenching. I really appreciate him doing all of that while I'm working on the technical wiring of this whole system. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. If you liked this video, you're also probably going to like this one. So you may want to watch that. And if this is your second time being on my channel, you might as well go ahead and subscribe because obviously you like this content. So see you guys in the next video.